Got the engine on the engine stand, and there's the old engine block and some of the accessories for it. Pretty much just got to start taking all the parts off this engine block and putting them on that block. I posted on the Mazda Speed 2.5 swap page, and they said you could run a run boost on stock internals, but it's not the best thing to do. I guess the ring lands will blow out if you put too much boost to it. So I think we're just gonna try to use stock internals and just turn the boost down quite a bit and see how long it runs. Salvage yard, duct taped all the exhaust ports shut. So now I got this duct tape sticky on everything. If you ever need to get that off, an easy way to do it is instead of using brake clean, just use some WD-40 and it'll pretty much just cut through. And how you do that is you remove the little plug that's right here and you have to have one of these special top dead center tools put it in there and tighten it down all the way when you go to tighten it make sure your this notch is slightly past that bolt hole that direction so that way the crankshaft will rotate and come up against that pin <clears throat> now we'll rotate it till it comes up against that pin right there hit so now we're at top dead center we're okay to pull the harmonic balancer off we got to put the milwaukee on the nut buster mode Let's try it again. Now I can start pulling the whole timing cover off. pulling these off and put them back together is that the harmonic balancer is basically kept in time by this special washer and that can only be used once it's just a friction washer that pretty much holds the time of the flywheel it holds the time of the harmonic balancer to the crankshaft and that way your crank position sensor can read right so if this doesn't seal right in that rotates on the crankshaft your timing is going to be all messed up and the bolt that goes in the crankshaft is also a torque to yield so you can only use it once so when you go back together you have to remember that balancer wheel. I guess there's a delete kit for that so I might just delete that off there. 
Yeah, they might have to use a different oil pickup tube because be, we'll be putting on the, the 2.3 oil pin, which will be different than the one that just came off. This whole pan looked pretty good. There's no chunks of metal or anything in it. This engine's only got 14,000 miles on it. Took the balancer shaft off. And on the old 2.3 block, it's got a balancer shaft delete plate. It just blocks off the oil passage. So I'll take that off and put it on the 2.5 block. Now I just have to put this bolt down in the hole to get that little block off plate tightened up. But a lot of people just put Loctite on threads and put it down in a blind hole. But any time you do that with Loctite, it won't work because the Loctite will just push itself back up out of the threads. So anytime you have a blind hole, you need to put the Loctite down in the hole and then put the bolt in and then torque it. Try not to drop our bolt down in our in one of our cylinders. Couldn't find any numbers online for what the torque on that bolt should be. But I looked it up and for 10 bolt, metric 10 bolt, it's 52 foot pounds. So I guess we'll try that. I think that's tight enough. I usually get pretty particular when there's a bolt down inside of an engine that can just fall out because I've seen it, seen them fall out before and go through gears. So you definitely don't want any problems with that bolt coming out, especially because you'll lose all your oil pressure. So well, we got this far and I just realized this engine doesn't have a high pressure fuel pump or a direct injection system at all. So I might have to do a cylinder head swap. I'll have to do some more research on it and find out. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.